what is up and welcome back to ringworm as uh most of you regular watchers know i've been living out here in the woods for uh over two years bought a piece of property in way northern michigan and uh, just decided to move out here in a tent with some camping gear to see how long it'd be fun and it's now been a couple years plus and it's still fun as ever so i'm not going anywhere uh it's springtime the snow's gone i think the rest of the ice is finally gone I got my solar panels out, you know, I got my uh, tool room finally finished. I, of course, built this thing with a chainsaw, chainsaw mill. I still at uh, two years of solid building and I haven't bought a single stick of lumber, I don't think. Yeah, not anything. I try not to even pay a uh, full price for screws and nails. I get those at the Goodwill uh, building store. But the one thing that was difficult over the winter being out here is that, uh, you know, when my stuff got wet, and being out here, there's uh, no place to dry stuff out, so I'd have to leave, you know, once a week I'd leave, uh, charge stuff up, dry my sleepy bag out, do laundry, stuff like that, but I don't want to have to leave here. So I think, I think I'm going to build a cabin. I mean, this is kind of a cabin. It looks like a cabin. And of course, got my Jackery recharging uh, my Ryobi batteries, and I use this to run my computer. That's the other problem. In the winter, I have to leave here in order to edit and upload videos. I can't sit in the tent. I can't sit at all in the winter. I just have to keep moving all the time to stay warm unless I'm sleeping. I get in my really good sleeping bag and I'm all right. But I can't edit out here. In the summer, spring, summer, fall, I bring my laptop out here, use the jackeries to run my computer, and it's fantastic. This was just meant to be a tool room, basically. Place to hang out. It's also clearly no insulation. Didn't want to insulate this. Don't really need to. Thing is, when the season like this rolls around, it's warm. It's freaking gorgeous. I don't want to be inside at all. And if I do build a cabin, I don't think it's going to get any use in the spring, summer, or fall. I mean, if I had a house sitting right here, well, if I had a house here, I wouldn't be here because I don't want to be in or near anybody's house. But even if there's a nice cabin here, I'm not going to stay in it very much of the year. I don't know. I mean, I might, I might just use it to hang out in the winter and to dry my stuff out. I could at least keep some water in there. That's the other issue in the winters is... I've got a water tower that I built. I just don't have any way to keep it from freezing, the water from freezing. So if I had a cabin, it's going to have great insulation. It's going to have a really good propane stove. I don't use wood because I want to be able to come in for, you know, a half an hour, turn it on, get warm, go out. I know, it's weird. I'm weird. This is a weird place. I borrowed a good uh, compass from uh, Tito. I'm going to take it out with an extra tripod. I think all four corners are surveyed, but it's the line in between the survey posts that aren't you know there's i don't know where the line is and i want to do i don't want to take down one tree here one tree there and i want to have a little bit of a field out here my guess is it'd be like a quarter acre i mean it's gonna be really small i don't even know if you could call it a field it'd be like a clearing but i want to do it right up on one of the property borders so i'm gonna go find the uh corner stake it's it's back that a direction which is where my walking shooting range is for the 22s which i shoot Maybe every day or every other day, I shoot about 200 rounds, and I've got to do about two thirds of the. La I got. I'm not just gonna walk back there. I mean, I'm gonna shoot my way back to the corner, and then we'll see with a, a good compass and a little bit of figuring if I can actually flag out that property line. And then if I can, I'm gonna find the spot where I want the little field, the little clearing. Start at the property line, just come out a little bit. I think Sarah's gonna be here the next couple days, and she loves to run the wood chipper. She likes burning stuff, so this would be a great opportunity. I've got. She's coming day after tomorrow. So I've got uh, tomorrow to cut some trees, limb them up, and then uh, and get her to do all the wood chipping, which would be, that'll be a great help. So we're gonna need some, I mean, you can't go survey your property with a lot of, with a lot of ammo. Yeah, you need about 200 rounds in there. We've got some marking tape and compass out there. Now we're ready. Got a couple of compasses, a couple of GoPro batteries, sip of water, and we're all set. Yep, that target worked.
made this one to practice thumbing, which I'm not very good at. Enough screwing around this is where I was trying to get to so the only place on the whole property that appears to have been surveyed other than the corners who knows when is this one line here I don't know if the original surveyors were cutting this or what the deal is but it's the only place on the whole property that starts at a corner and goes in a straight line so I think the declination here the magnetic declination is like six or seven degrees the compasses I have aren't great I don't know if they're gonna be close enough to a degree so I'm going to try to set up on the tripod here, look straight down this and see what my compass says. And then when I turn the corner, I'll know how many degrees off from north, south, east, west I got to go. So here's my, here's my thought. I've got this one tripod that I don't use much anymore. It's really heavy, but it has a bubble level on it. So I'm thinking I level that, throw Tito's compass on here. I don't know if this is going to be accurate, en accurate enough or not, but we'll see. Yeah, I got one compass, I got 10 degrees, one I've got 8 degrees. I guess I'm just going to trust the uh, more expensive compass. So I guess I'm going to go right up to the corner here, where I think, actually, there's not a mark here. I think I know where the corner is. Going from this corner to that corner over there. I'm going to shoot it with the compass, get my bearing, look down as far as I can to the furthest tree that's right in line. I'm going to go put a mark around that. Mark that, stand there, shoot another one, and see if I come out at the other corner marker which even if I'm off a degree over the course of you know the whole length of the property I mean I guess theoretically I don't have to cut the trees right up to the exact property border but I kind of like to there's a trail going this way where the deer castle is and right along this edge of the trail there's just a I don't know 50 feet or something before the property border which is all just woods it all looks exactly the same so I was kind of thinking from that trail over to the property border, I'd just take a chunk and clear all of it out. So I want to make sure I cut as far in as I can. Obviously, I don't want to go over the, the property line or anything. Let's just go to the corner and give it a go. I guess I can always go from one corner and go down to the other end. If I come out, you know, 50 or 100 feet off, I can come back and do it again. And it's a real shame to be passing up these targets on a perfectly good day like this. All right, there's not actually a stake here or anything but when I first bought the property and I was out walking around here there were a couple different colors of uh, tape out here and this is where they crossed and I know it was within I don't know a small number of feet to the corner so I think this is uh, I think this is what we're gonna call the corner I assume that most people watching this channel uh, know how all this stuff works but Let's talk about declination. That's just the difference between map north, like if you pull out any map you've got, north is oriented up, and magnetic north, which is where your compass needle will actually point. So depending on where on earth you are, you need to know the difference between map north and magnetic north. It could be like this. And here it's like seven degrees, I think. So you just have to know to basically offset your, essentially offset your compass by seven degrees. The trick is to walk through the forest, never taking your eye off that tree without, you know, yard sale in it and getting a branch through the forehead. Came out here earlier to shoot and I brought a compass with me and I did have a little bit of this. And I was just hand holding the compass, the cheap one, the little plastic one. And I got a few flags in and just gave up on it, just trying to hand hold and, you know, it just wasn't working. But now that I look, the tree that the first uh, tree that I marked is right there and it is directly in line with this. So I don't know, maybe I could have done without the extra tripod. We'll see. I guess instead of bringing my 22, I should have brought a machete. Eh, that would have been, been too sensible. About seven degrees off. 
You hear the wood thrush? I think it's a wood thrush. Some kind of some kind of thrush. Sounds like a flautist. I think it's seven. I think it was six degrees like a couple years back. That's the other weird thing is you can't you can't just carry a table around for the declination because it's not always the same. It changes year year to year. Oh my gosh. I can see uh, I'm sighting through here trying to find something to pick. And 150 feet that way is dead on the green ribbon that I put up earlier. Like that's what's in the sight line exactly. Interestingly, I can see this ribbon right here. I can see the one that I just spotted and I can see one more after that, I think. It's some kind of genius used green earlier. <laughs> All right, I'll just walk up to that one then. You know what I need right now? I need like a 50-50 mix of a Bernese Mountain Dog and a Newfie with a backpack. That'd be sweet. It'd be so muddy and so full of sticks and burrs and everything, but I could carry my tripods for me. Put a little vest on the dude and, uh, you know, have him carry some snacks and your ammo and whatnot. Still waiting to hear, still waiting to hear if I'm getting a puppy or not, but that's also uh, what kind of spurred this cabin building thing. If I do get a dog, oh, something's climbing down my neck. Woo! If I do get a dog, you can't uh, just live in a tent with me all winter long. It's 20 below and the dog's all wet and snowy. I don't think it'd work. It wouldn't work for me anyway. I already lost sight of my other ribbon, but I guess we'll find it. Well, this is good if I uh, use two different compasses three times or for a total of three times. Yep, there's my green. Then we, we know we should be pretty, pretty close by where we need to be. So... This trail, going to the right here, goes right down there and somewhere through those trees is the deer castle on the left side of the trail. You guys have seen that a hundred times, that uh, structure. The property line is here, going down there somewhere, so this is kind of the island right here that I was thinking of clearing out. I don't know if I'd start exactly right here, but somewhere between here and the deer castle. Don't lose that tree, still see it. Keeping an eye on it, it's the one right through that stump. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Oh, no way. <laughs> it's the one with the green tape on it. No way. Is it? Or was it this one? Crap. Well, I can't be 100% sure. It was uh, within five feet of that one with the green tape on it, though. See that right there? It's almost like I know what I'm... Oh. There it is. It was that one. All right, well, still, still we got, this is a good sign. We're doing all right here. The only kind of downside that I'm seeing here is here's the trail, and this is the chunk I wanted to clear out. So I only got this little slice right here from there to here. Oh, actually, there's some pretty big cedars in here. Yeah, actually, there's some pretty big ones. Those are all 10, 10. 10 and then back in here he yeah, has like a 12er and a 10er and a 12er and a 12er and a 12er and a 12er wow actually just this stand right here alone these uh dozen trees would be enough to side probably at least half a cabin this is gonna work i thought i had more property this way but i think there are enough trees here That one right there. Well, I already marked the spot that I needed to mark, but uh, now I want to continue to the other corner just to make sure that I was on track the whole time. If it matches up with the other corner, then I'm good to cut. Check that out. <laughs> Sweet. So if I sight back down my ribbons right here, and right there is the marker where the tripod is. So I'm about uh, 
about 15 feet off, which means my flags here all the way at this end could have been moved over 15 feet. And it's about half that distance back to the other corner where I'm actually going to cut. So I'm very conservative about where I'm going to cut is like seven feet, maybe seven feet inside the property border. So I can cut the trees that have the flags on them. That's great. <laughs> kind of amazing with a cheap compass and a uh, tripod, you can get that close. I'm happy with that. It's another day. I was going to spend the whole day uh, working on that little clearing. And then uh, I saw the compass is still sitting there and the marking ribbon. So I went to check out a different part of the property and see if the marking lines were straight. If I could figure a couple things out. And you know, of course, I had the 22 with me. And then now it's 3 o'clock. <laughs> that always seems to happen when I have a, a handgun with me and a bunch of targets everywhere. But I'm going to get this put away. At least grab one saw, head down there. I think uh, it's a little bit of a hoof from here. Like, I don't really want to cut and drag limbs to burn and stuff all the way back up here. So I'm thinking I'll start in the middle of the area that I want to clear, kind of cut some trees back, and then maybe make a little fire pit right there. But it'd be a whole lot quicker and easier if I could just burn the real small and crooked limbs down there. I don't know if you guys can tell the size of this area, but let me show you from another point of view. Here's the slice. There's the marker we put up yesterday. It goes that direction, parallel to this trail here. So it's going to be just this slice here going back. And it really doesn't go that far. I'm guessing that's only like 30 or 40 feet deep this way. And then I really don't want to go down past... I don't know if you can see the lighter color trail here where I put gravel in it, but that's a low spot and there's different, I think there's some alder trees and stuff in here, down here. So I definitely stopped by there. Yeah, so this is kind of the end of it. So right here to that flag there and back there to the four-wheeler. That's not very big. It's like uh, 30 or 40 feet by 100 feet. Anyway, you do the math. I don't really care. I'm just going to start cutting. Yeah, I think the fire pit's got to go right here, which is great because it's right in the almost dead center in the middle of this chunk that I want to take out. So I think I'm just going to start here and work my way out and make a couple brush piles, piles out of the way where it's not going to catch fire when I light this thing up. I do intend to build this cabin like I build everything else without much planning because this is going to be twice as big as the tool room man cave that I already made. I'm going to have to give a little more thought than I usually do to uh, the foundation. It's not going to be just logs sitting right on the dirt because as you guys saw over the winter the man cave you know the ground froze and thawed and everything it was actually moving around considerably. So if this thing's twice that long I can't have you know, a stump here, around here, a concrete here, the whole thing is just going to do weird things. So that I'll have to give some thought to, but it's going to be a little less than 200 feet. So it's legal. I don't know. It'll be some kind of rectangle. I'll have to figure that just because of the length of my mill, what the longest boards are I can make. And I'll probably use that for the width of the building. I did find uh, in my excursion yesterday to mark out this side of the property, 
I did find another fairly massive white pine tree like you guys saw I cut down. It was actually right at the top of the shooting range. I think that was the first video of the uh, tiny cabin man cave build. And I used that one tree, I think I got four logs out of it, and used that one tree to frame the, the foundation, the floor, joists, and I think all the walls too, just from that one tree. I don't think this one's quite as big, but if I get that one and I know where another one is, uh, both of them had dead, have dead tops on them and they're really going downhill fast. If I get two of those, I'd be able to frame the whole thing. So, one thing at a time, we'll get there. It'll turn into a cabin eventually. happened again even with the shield down the sap went just like splashed through it it was like getting hit with water and then you wait a second and then you feel it start burning your eyeball oh it sucks the only thing I've ever found that thins out sap is uh, rubbing alcohol but I don't think I'm gonna be spraying that in my eyes just yet oh planning to do this for what two or three days while you're out here and we accidentally had to lay around in our underwear in the gazebo for a couple days because <laughs> it was too hot it was like 70 degrees it was 72 so, oh it was ridiculous it was no way too nobody hot. can function in those kind of temperatures mm -hmm. we was, had to go get ice cream it was yeah it's kind of like being in an much. oven we couldn't yeah. handle it yeah we couldn't handle so it. we've got a half a day now <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you go. Proof that I still have a girlfriend. <laughs> she was out here for, uh, I don't know, three, four, five days and 
it was just too hot to do anything. Just like right now, it's like a, <laughs> I think it's a high of 64, 65 today. And man, when you got to wear snow pants all the time and a long sleeve shirt, it's uh makes you sweat real fast. We actually spent a uh, day before yesterday, like half the day looking at bugs. I got these, got this cool microscope. I'll put a link in the description to these. I know everybody's going to want to get one of these when they see what they do. They're super cheap. They got LED lights in it, a camera. It says up to a thousand X zoom. It You can actually get a, a bug or a leaf or whatever like that close to it. It does some amazing magnification. Here, I'll show you a couple of the pictures that I just took the other day. I can't remember when I bought that thing. I think it was last fall. I bought it because I wanted to look at mushrooms. And then this spring, just starting like a month ago, I started collecting bugs. <laughs> like, it was weird, you go all winter, you go like five months and there's not a single bug. And then you see one here, a different one comes out three days later. So I started putting them in a jar with alcohol and saving them. And then when Sarah is here, we pulled them all out and looked at them. Yeah, and they're like, I don't know, I can't remember how much it was, 30 bucks, 35 bucks or something on Amazon. I was kind of astounded. I've been wanted to get a microscope for a really long time, which I probably will this summer. I want to get a good one that I can hook my uh, DSLR up to and take really high-res photos. But in the meantime, I thought I'd get one of these for real cheap and just see if I liked it, see if I used it a bunch, and if so, then I'll get a, a good microscope to keep out here. Yeah, the thing is incredible. <laughs> All right, back to cutting. We got. I feel like we got sort of a lot done, but man, there's a lot to go. Just starting a book called uh, Digital Minimalism. I find it best just not to use much tech, except for you got to have your audiobooks and podcasts. Or I mean, you can die if you don't get enough of that. Had to hold on to that. I don't know what for, but we'll make something out of it. Well, hmm. <laughs> that should be uh that should be the tagline for surviving ringworm. Well, hmm. <laughs> this pile's getting too big. I can't really burn anymore because the weather's not right for it. It's starting to dry out a little bit. Just don't want to take any chances, and it's been fairly windy. I don't really have a good place to put the brush anymore. And I'm just starting in on the really big trees, so there's going to be a lot more. Of course, a lot of that I can ship, but I think I'm going to have to move this wood pile. I kind of hate to, uh, when I cut trees and move this stuff around, I hate to have to pick it up like six times, you know. You buck it up on the ground, then you pick it up, you throw it over here, then you pick it up, put it in the pile, and now I've got to put it all in the trailer, take it up to camp and dump it. But there's no way I'm going to sit down here long enough to burn all that stuff up. And I kind of just don't want to leave big stacks of it. I, I did that for the first year or two. It's just like cut down trees. And instead of taking care of the stuff, I just kind of <laughs> shove it off in the edges of wherever I was working and left it there. But when people come to visit, Tito's here, Sarah's here, whatever, everybody likes campfires. I don't really care that much for them. I don't do them uh, just for fun, but you can burn up a lot of stuff like that. So I think I'm going to take a little bit of time and while it's still cool this morning and move all that stuff up to camp, dump it. Or I could just stay here and stare at it for a while and see if anything happens. Might.
just got this area cleaned up. When Sarah was here, we burned all this stuff. And this stand, we just have these left, maybe what, 10, 12 trees or something. Most of them are pretty small. It's gonna clear all of this. And you know, as I look at it, there might be one tree in there that'll actually get a saw log out of. So I'm gonna take all those down and just have to do something with all the branches. And the downside is most of it's not chippable. So I'd still like to make this into a complete clearing. I don't know that I'm gonna do it all right now though, cause I just don't have any place to put the branches until I can burn them. But of course, there's a good chance that if I don't do this now, I'm never gonna come back down here. Just, oh, I'll just go cut and chip a bunch of trees for no reason. So I think I will, I see one good saw tree in there. I think I'm gonna take all the really little ones down here and maybe a couple of the others just to open it up because these trees are so choked that I think a lot of them are dying because they're, I mean, they're, they're growing straight up and they only have a little bush of branches at the very, bush of branches, is that a thing? Must be. So if I can clear this out a little bit more, I think uh, these trees will be a lot more healthy right here. We'll get a couple of really big ones. And then we can go down for that little stand there, about 20, 15, 20 trees. And those are, there are a lot of good saw trees in there. All that work for a tree that's no good. Well, filling mud holes with wood chips is not the best idea. I've tried it several times. Anything that fills up with water just makes the wood chips float. <laughs> so it's not a long-term solution, but hey, it's a good receptacle for wood chips right now. I just finished that digital minimalism book and it was fantastic. It was so freaking interesting. Even if you don't have an issue with being glued to electronic devices and social media and all that stuff. Just the data he collected and the studies are so freaking fascinating. That one comes highly recommended. You might want to check that out. Now uh, I just had to look really quick on the library app. Now I've got uh, hidden figures playing in my ears. I'm just starting. Seen the movie, never read the book. That's what we're looking for right there. Got two really nice 12 foot logs out of that one. What do you suppose you'd have to pay for a one by 10 rough hewn cedar board 12 feet long? Probably more than a couple bucks. I'm saving money out here, people. I hope you don't think this is exhausting. I mean, I guess I just hope it's not exhausting for you. Probably, it probably is. Oh, I can't imagine just 
sitting there and seeing all this work done. That's got to be tough. Every now and then you got to look up, see why things aren't going the way you wanted them to. Snagged up in another tree. It's quite a snaggle. And that's totally on me. I should have looked at that beforehand. Sometimes you just don't think of everything, you know. That was really dumb though to not notice it. All right, I guess we'll cut them both down at the same time. Oh, actually, this tree might be caught up in that blue stuff up there. I forgot to check for that. Yeah, there's blue stuff all around it. Oh, man. Well, let's just go for it. Man, that's a lot to clean up all of a sudden. That's more like it. That's my kind of tree. You can chip probably 80% uh, of it or so. Man, I'm, uh, I think I'm sweated out for today. <laughs> Drank at least a gallon of water in the last, well, since lunch. And I still feel dehydrated, starting to get a headache. So let's quit. Before we conclude this video though, I think we ought to go up and uh, I haven't really figured out where I'm going to build this thing. So we go up, take a little look around. A couple, couple places might work out. Also, I want to take, I got a load full of firewood in the trailer there that I need to drag up. But on the way, I'm going to stop and look at uh, a couple of these pine trees. Perhaps the next video will be uh, cutting some much, much bigger trees than these and seeing if I can figure out a way to get them out of the woods. It's like you can imagine it being a football field back there and then trying to figure out how to get those giant logs. Actually, they're not going to come out of the woods because there's no way my four-wheeler can pull them. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But let's go take a look at uh, the place to build and at least one of those big pines. Somewhere right back here. There's a massive one you can just see through the hole there. That one looks pretty healthy. This right here is the top of another one. That's still growing pretty good too. Where is it? There's a couple more back here. One more back there, one there. I have to get off and walk around a little bit, I guess. They're pretty easy to spot because they stick up so high above all the other trees. Yeah, I can see a bunch of them around here, but they all look pretty healthy. Man, some of these, it would take uh, one of them to build the whole thing, to frame the whole thing, but I don't know. They're so cool. They're so massive. See those two right there? That's what they look like if they're really healthy. All bizarre and wingy. Wingy. Wingy? Yeah. Wingy. Oh, I see it. <laughs> oh my gosh. This would be such a pain to try to get this out of here. I'd have to... I guess I just have to cut it and... Yeah. Oh, that one does not look good. Maybe that's already not worth it. I guess I found, yeah, we found this when I was putting the uh, property, finding the property line. See, the top's completely dead and there's only got like four or five branches and all those, uh, the needles are all going brown on it. Now the bottom here looks pretty good. I mean, it's still got all its bark. And you get up to there. You can see the tree's quite dead from there up, so I don't know what, if anything, you get out of it. And then the rest, who knows, probably junk up there. Yeah, look at the size of this healthy one. Holy moly, that's like uh, probably two feet across. Look at all that building. Not gonna do it. I don't know why, I don't know why one's more important to keep than another, but I don't know, there's something about it. Actually, right next to it, this one's a little smaller. That's probably 18 inches at the bottom or so. But 
the top of that's dead too. It's just got a bunch of branches right there, just that one clump. So I guess if I came out here and, oh my gosh, this would be such a disaster to try to clean all this out enough to work back here. But I guess if I was gonna take this one down, I might as well take them both. Yeah, even though that's smaller, that's a nice straight trunk going up there. That's probably four or five good logs out of that, which is more than I can save for most of the cedars. Well, I gotta finish the finish the cedar clearing first and then we'll figure this out. I do I do really want to frame with pine. I've never really heard of anybody framing with cedar before. I'm sure it's done. But the good thing about the pines is you can get if you gotta make, you know, two by eights or two by tens or whatever, you can get a lot of full size boards out of a, a big straight uh, white pine tree unlike any other species I got out here. So, okay, too much thinking. How do you get out of here now? I seem to have misplaced the four-wheeler. <laughs> oh. It's hard to lift your legs up too high with these chainsaw pants on. The good news is the strawberry flowers are up. Shouldn't be too many weeks or months before I get the wild strawberries out here. Those are my favorite. Don't worry, we're gonna survive this. All right, let's see. Let's see, where should we build this thing? We are, for reference, right in camp, where everything is. When I cut down all these trees, these were all uh, old, dead, rotten aspen trees. And I leave all the stumps up just in case I want to build something and I already have a pre-made foundation. I don't know if I'd use the... I mean, the aspen stumps would still last quite a while. Not anywhere near as good as the cedar stumps. So I got this area here to play with. My original thought was to put... I want to make that... Uh, monster outdoor kitchen i was thinking about putting it right on this hillside here just like just sticking off the edge and then having a bar on the edge of it on the uh outside end of it that you could you could stand at and cook or whatever and you'd be looking down the hill might have to use that spot for my cabin though this hill does run from tito's tent platform and then that's uh atv trail right behind the uh, wood pile there and the hill runs all the way along here so I could use any other part of it for the cabin too. And my original thought was, of course, as always, to use uh, cedar stumps as a foundation. But I don't know, this thing's going to be so, I was going to say so big, 200 square feet, less than 200 square feet. Not that big, but that's a lot of wet, unseasoned lumber. It's a lot of weight. So unless I could support the entire thing on stumps, which isn't going to happen, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff I've built is not square. Like I'll just use four stumps and make whatever I'm building fit that shape, <laughs> which has worked out so far. But I think this cabin is just in my head is probably going to be the only square thing out here. In which case it'd be hard to find trees to use for it, for the foundation and I hate to say it, but I think I'm going to bring concrete out and actually put real footings. The good thing about that, overusing stumps for this, is I can put the cabin exactly where I want it. If I want it sticking off the edge of the hill a little bit, that's where I'll put it. I don't have to fit it to the trees that are there. So if I put it right on this hillside here, man, it's just a lot more clearing to do. What the heck? I'm feeling raindrops, and there is a big black cloud right there. I gotta go put stuff away. All right, well... We'll figure this out next time, huh? It's definitely going to be somewhere right along here. I have to figure out uh, what needs to come down, what can stay, and then do some more cutting. A lot more cutting. Wow. This is going to be a big project. Well, that's all right, because that's all I know how to do. Screw around in the woods and build stuff with the chainsaw, and when it gets done, repeat. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next week. We'll do some stuff with a chainsaw. See ya. Hey, by the way, I forgot to say something. I'm not going to build this like I've built everything else. I mean, I am going to do it without any plans and just kind of build it as I go. But this thing is going to be badass. 
I just decided if I'm going to build a cabin that I could potentially have for the next very long time, I'm going to make stuff really nice. I'm going to build, I've always kind of wanted to build all my own furniture. So instead of just like, you know, slabs of wood with drywall screws, I mean, I might still use drywall screws, but anyway, this thing's going to be sweet. I'll probably get it closed in sometime this summer or the fall or whatever, have it usable. And then I want to spend probably maybe in the fall, I'll spend some time cutting trees, getting some, a couple of nice birches and stuff. And then this winter I can make all custom furniture for it. That'd be sweet. Okay. Carry on. <laughs>